get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, we have one of the top innovators in cancer research, Dr. Craig Dion. He's co-founder of Genspera, where they develop cutting-edge cancer treatments. He's over 25 years of experience in the pharmaceutical industry and has served for years at a biopharmaceutical company where he was responsible for its oncology and neurobiology drug discovery programs. He's also served as executive vice president at the Prostate Cancer Research Foundation, and his research has led to six issued patents and many scientific papers. Craig, Dr. Dion, thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure. I look forward to this. Craig, since it's Inspired Insider, I always ask the question, what's been the lowest point and then how you got through it? The lowest point might be what we talked a little bit about before. Right after I quit uh, Cephalon, started this company, and for three or four years had no money. You know, both for the company, so you doubt whether you made the right decision for your family. Um you know, you know what you're putting them through and, you know, you got kids, you got special schools, you know, for things like that. But it, it was a part of the identity. So how do you get through it? Your family, you know, I got a great wife who's been married 30 something years. Right. Uh, the kids, too, were very, very proud that, you know, they like to be able to say, my dad's going to cure cancer. Yeah. That was part of their identity. Right. So you'd have a bad day and they will ask, you know, well. What happened today? And you can't tell them the bad news. You got to tell them the good news. Right. You know? so right. They keep going. And then, of course, your colleagues, John Isaacs, you know, that, that I had that was always encouraging. Keep your eye on the goal here. Yeah. Okay. And we did get through it all. Yeah. You know? and, it, and it's really, you look back and, you know, but you rely upon friends and family. Yeah. So, what words of wisdom did your wife have when you were going through that? You knew it would be tough. You can do it. <laughs> We've been married a long time. You know, I'm pretty determined. And it's, uh, we were never driven by money. It's always driven by what are you trying to achieve? Yeah. And if you believe in it, you keep doing it. Yeah. Because that is tough. You know, it's easier sometimes when someone gives that advice and when you're actually in the situation, you know, looking back now, but at the time, it's got to be difficult. Like you go to, you know, Dr. Isaacs or your wife and say that, and that is the circumstance, you know. Well, let, let me, I, I agree with you, but what you have to then do is, it wasn't a science issue, it was a funding business issue. Mm-hmm. So we needed to be as imaginative in the business as yeah. we were in our science. Yeah. Typically in those times, which is 2004, you know, through First Monies came in in 2007, right. the typical way to get money was through VC and VCs were abandoning early stage trot or early stage companies. You know, anything were preclinical, they weren't being touched. So what we did was go public on our own, file an S one, oh, well. a self, you know, registration, which very, very few companies had done by that point in time. Yeah. Okay, so it was a true and again, credit the imagination of our corporate counsel who I brought on board at that time to work through this process. He's been with us since then. He's a great securities counsel. But having that imagination through all aspects of your team, I think is another lesson that you have. Everybody's got to be good. Yeah. What was the most interesting experience going through the becoming a uh, public company? Man, you know, I've never done this before. So it's the level of regulation the expectations of shareholders. It's one thing when you have VCs who are very sophisticated in your business and understand more or less what you're trying to do versus layperson investors who are interested, enthusiastic, but don't really know your business. Right. And accommodating all that, 
you know, and having to communicate at a level. These are bright people. Yeah. They're just not medicine people. Right. You know? It's a different language. Yeah. It's a different language. And then really becoming comfortable with speaking in that language. Yeah. So, Craig, on the flip side, what's been one of the proudest moments? I got to tell you, clinical data. <laughs> All the time. I'll point to that. That's when you know you were right. Yeah. You know, you can talk to your investors and you say it may have been more expensive, it may have been taken longer, but yeah. your money was well spent. Look what it's going to do for patients. And that that is real. Now, we still have a lot of business to do, obviously, but clinical data, you could always say, I yeah. told you so, you know, believe in me, we got there. Right. We're not done yet, but it's now you get turning the crank and doing it aggressively. Yeah. What was the first piece of data that came in that you felt that that first liver cancer patient who lasted a year was you know at, what you learn as you start learning more about particular cancers no one says eight months in these patients you know it never happens mm. and you know you go you, you talk to experts you say i don't want to fool myself do i believe the data right and they'll say you know is this just an outlier and they say yeah you'll get an outlier like that one in 200 not two out of five you got to go do the next study. And then when you take it to, we again, you don't want to drink your own Kool-Aid. We take our data to medical advisory panels, key opinion leaders from around the world, and say, right. what do you think? You know, if you tell us, I don't want to waste time and money. Yeah. And they're constantly encouraging. You have something here. You have to go forward. And that's where you're hearing it. They're not getting anything personal out of this. It's just that we like the mechanism of action. The side effect profile is unbelievable. We think it worked. Now we have the data that say we know it works for these patients. Let's just find out what's the best way. Yeah, Craig, this has been hugely valuable, and I've really enjoyed the the deep discussion on this. I have one last question for you, but before I ask it, where can we point people towards? What what should they check out as far as Gen Sparrow goes? Go to our website, GenSparrow.com. Um, and if you're Chinese, we have a Chinese version of our website. That's how committed we are to developing this molecule in liver cancer in Asia. Mm -hmm. um, so, And that's constantly being updated. You'll see it change over time. And then for clinical trial information, clinicaltrials.gov. That is an extraordinary resource for all patients and their families. Yeah. Yeah. So Genspera is G-E-N-S-P-E-R-A, and we'll link it up as well, dot com. Um, Craig, my last question is, What's a day in the life look like for you? What time do you wake up? What um, <laughs> what does it look like to be a public CEO founder? Well, what you know is at the end of your day, you don't know when it's going to end. So, <laughs> the beginning of the day, you have a little control. Yeah, do you have a routine in the morning? Yeah, four thirty, five thirty in the morning, somewhere between there. Have coffee on the back porch while it's quiet. And usually go for a walk around sunrise because that's when the birds are singing. Mm -hmm. And then it's a, to the office or travel, whatever. If I'm on the road, I'm on the road a lot. But you never know when the end of the day is. So your, your only routine you have control over is first thing in the morning. What do you spend most of your time on throughout the day, typically? Communication. You know, keeping the team together. Uh, I'm not a big fan of meetings, but... Constant communication with shareholders, with potential investors, um, and then the, some of the more fun ones is with the clinical investigators. You know, meeting I had a meeting at the University of Texas San, uh, Health Science Center, San Antonio. They've got ideas for trials, and there's some really cool trials that we're going to get into mm. uh, that I'll reveal a little bit later. Some uh, things that I think will be very short and very exciting. Yeah. Well, so, what final words should we leave people with? You know, I think people um, always talk about a balanced life. I'm not so sure that's whatever what I wanted. I mm -hmm. think it's much better to be passionate, be determined, be a little bit in balance, but be enthusiastic. You know, let's just enjoy it yeah. and do what you want to do there. Yeah. Thank you, Craig. Dr. Dean, it's been an absolute pleasure. I appreciate it. Oh, I really enjoyed this. Thank you. Like a peach if you find the same right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand